So hi, I'm Molly Jane, Head of News. And I'm Olivia, Head of Editorial. And this is Coffee and Crypto. Um, first, Olivia is going to talk about FedNow, which is the Federal Reserve's new idea for an instant um, payment settlement system. Don't give it all away. I'll have nothing to say. Okay. Molly, you're going to tell me about Binance allegedly leaking KYC info. Allegedly. Right? Yep. I said allegedly. Mm -hmm. I'm just underlining it. And you're also going to tell me about the Coinbase Bitcoin Cash case. Yeah, there's a new ruling on that as of this the week. The old case, but the new ruling. Yep. Okay. And, um, and that'll be it for the week. That'll be it for the week, yeah. Not a huge week. Not that exciting. So the Fed now news. Mm -hmm. It's basically the Fed which is the central bank of the United States, if you didn't know. Yeah, <laughs> I know now. Uh, making a system for real-time payments, real-time settlement that is going to, uh, first of all, it doesn't exist yet. They announced it and they're like developing it. They want to launch it, I think in 20, 2023 or 2024. And the main idea is to make a payment system that you can use 24 seven. Anytime, it works all the time, right? You don't have to wait for your payment to go through to, to another bank for like three days or even for a few hours or whatever. There's a little catch. It only works within the US. Okay, that's like, that's a big point. Yeah, it's a big one. Because and it's like, does it sound like anything that ripple. you know about? <laughs> or it just sounds crypto just like cryptocurrencies in general, but I think more specifically Ripple because Ripple using XRP and you know their X Rapid system are really the ones that are trying to work with real-time settlement, specifically in terms of remittances, but that's international. Right, that's and we're India, not chill ripple, but... No, definitely no. not. <laughs> but it's more the question of if this FedNow system is something that could be a possible competitor for Ripple in the future. You brought up Ripple and a lot of people in the internet also brought up Ripple when yep. this news came out. I mean, that was like sort of one of the first uh, reactions a lot of people had was like, and oh, Bitcoin. That, and Bitcoin. And, Someone and tweeted and saying, who was it? Was it Pomp that tweeted that? He's yeah, like, we already, already, we already have Bitcoin. Yeah. 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 Well, my question has to do with what is it going to be built on? Do we know that it's not going to be distributed ledger technology? Well, they definitely aren't. It's definitely not publicly anything related to blockchain. But which we don't is know like, that yet. <laughs> right, right, but like, yeah, not to confuse people. It's not like it's not like the Fed made like a blockchain-based system. No, or like made their own crypto. Like, absolutely not. They didn't. No, nope. it seems uh, that the system, as is far using, as we know, yeah, <laughs> as far as we know, they're hiding it. <laughs> well, I just I hear the word real-time payment settlement system, and I think that that can only be done with blockchain. And if you're a tech no. person, <laughs> tell me why there that's not true. Tell me what the other options are. Yeah. I'm just living in this bubble and everyone is just all about DLT and all about blockchain. So the fact that they can do it without blockchain makes me just wonder why didn't they do it before? Like allegedly the Fed registered this product as early as 2008. Was that before or after the financial crash though? Like in. Like during. I think so. Okay. Um, I'm not sure. Well, it'd be interesting October. if they did register it during the whole financial meltdown because that would show that people at the Federal Reserve were kind of thinking along the lines of Satoshi Nakamoto, like they were just trying to come up with different ways to improve on our traditional financial system. Right. And then the project like got sort of forgotten about and died and now it's being reborn, which is funny, like in the sort of hype of crypto, but it's like also late. I mean, it's not well, late, it's, but it's, yeah, it's late. It's been, it's been a few years, but it's just funny to think that that was before Bitcoin. Yeah. Yeah. What could have been? Fedcoin. No, but it's not. I know, I know. I know <laughs> it's not. I know it's not. I know I'm it's sure not. somebody's made a Fedcoin now. And, and they're trying to trick people online. They're, it's no, like it's Fed not now. a thing. That's a scam. Um, I don't know. Bitcoin scams are happening everywhere. There was another piece this week that talked about how many millions of dollars was lost on those Bitcoin sextortion scams this year, where it's like you get an email saying like, I have a video of you watching oh. porn and you have to send me this much in Bitcoin um, or I'll release it to your friends and family. Just like a regular extortion, but with Bitcoin. Yeah, but it's funny. It happened to my aunt. Whoa. I was with her a month ago and she got an email saying, send me 
like 0.5 Bitcoin because I have a video of you watching porn. My aunt is like in her 60s, happily she's married. Like, I just, not that watching porn you hey. can't do if you're married, but like, she, Molly, <laughs> it's so conservative. I'm sorry, that's not what I meant. I the, that. Point was that, the point was it wasn't her. She, she knew it. She knew it wasn't her, yes. Uh, we were traveling in Europe together. She was, you know, we were, we were together. It wasn't her and she didn't pay them. But weirdly, that same like hour that the email was sent was all of her bank accounts were compromised. So that was a little weird. Maybe they were connected. Most Bitcoin scams actually Whoa. aren't real, but they somehow, you know, fished her. So our question for our audience members, because it happened to my aunt. If any of you guys have been victims of any sort of Bitcoin scams, you can comment Crypto below. Scams. Crypto scams, not just Bitcoin. One thing that I know is on our website all the time is people commenting, kind of to be Binance in our comments, doing mm -hmm. a giveaway. No one does giveaways. Like they really just don't do giveaways. There are airdrops, there are real things. And um, you just, you know, if you see Binance commenting on an Binance. article about- Not Binance, but like fake Binance. If you see Binance commenting on one of our articles, you know, about like UK, IRS taxes saying, send me money and I'll send you more money. It's not, it's not real. Don't fall for scams in the comment section of the Cointelegraph website or on YouTube or on Twitter. Okay. We're never gonna give you money for free, ever. Why would anyone do that? <laughs>
made people upset that we're planning on making money off of this. And all of a sudden it was added and then it was stopped. So ever since then, there have been ongoing court cases against Coinbase, um, or this lawsuit claiming that it was something that was acted fraudulently. And there were even, there were even claims of insider trading. Right. I mean, as in, yeah. yeah, Coinbase employees knew this was going to happen and they were able to buy a bunch of Bitcoin cash. Um, make it available on Coinbase, sell it for a super high price, and then stop the trading. The lawsuit was concluded because it said that Coinbase did not price manipulate by doing that. Okay. And now the lawsuit is moving just towards the negligence claims. And I can read a quotation from the lawyer or from the, the judge that said, um, Moreover, while the factual allegations paint a compelling picture of an incompetent launch by Coinbase, incompetency, the complaint does not outline a coherent account of fraud by Coinbase, Brian Armstrong, and then Farmer, another Coinbase employee. So overall, it's not great what happened with Coinbase. They're saying basically that they're, they were incompetent, but that they were not maliciously incompetent, okay. which is good to know because Coinbase is so big. And for so many Americans, it's just the number one way to store their crypto just because of yeah, it's because of the name recognition, and so I kind of like this kind of, this news that it's saying that maybe they messed up, which isn't great, but it's not saying they did it in a mean way, and it's just you but know. Also, yeah, you know, like every time because Coinbase, like the the not not Coinbase Pro, but Coinbase, the like retail version or whatever yeah. they mm -hmm. call it, um, their wallet is very limited in terms of the coins on it. And that well, makes it so that they're looking into adding more coins this week. Right. And it, but way. every time they say that those coins get pumped or something happens. So like it, it matters. Like every time Coinbase says they're thinking of adding a coin or they add a coin, like the coin's price is yeah. affected significantly, potentially more than other exchanges, centralized exchanges, because like it just has the name recognition. It's, it's name the, recognition, but it's also because it's such a limited selection. I mean, it's just like okay, not comparable too, to yeah. other exchanges. The lack of options on Coinbase so, means okay, that yeah, every I time a just, coin is going to be added, it causes more of a, a ripple yeah, in the market. So this, right. So this is not just about Bitcoin Cash. I mean, the Bitcoin Cash case is really important because people filed a lawsuit about it and um, it's a particular Bitcoin. But like, this is an issue that Coinbase has with their sort of like PR process that they go through when they list a coin and or they, when they talk about listing coins, like it's like these little hints. And that like arguably could be seen as manipulation. I mean, they know as anyone in like crypto Twitter knows that if they talk about a coin, uh, it's, its price will be affected in some way. So it's like an issue that any sort of well-known person in crypto has, like Charlie Lee. <laughs> No, oh, it's true. I mean, and Charlie Lee sold all his Litecoin holdings, you know, in a very public way. Yeah, so he a could few years ago, so that from... he could make comments about Litecoin without everyone hating, hating on, on him. him. Jinx. We also just did an interview with Charlie Lee, and you can check it out in the link. All right. So another fun way to end this segment is that you can see on my shirt it's Bitcoin. Bitcoin and Benjamin. Bitcoin and Benjamin. And we're gonna have a small contest. So anyone comments below the best caption they can think of for this t-shirt, and they get to win this t-shirt. That was Coffee and Crypto, I'm Olivia. And I'm Molly Jane. Make sure to read more news on our website as well as longer features, and don't forget to subscribe. It's very important, and we'll tell you why next time. <laughs>